Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Christian Veer. I'm developer evangelist with uh, Cisco DevNet. I focus on security technologies. And I have with me Jared, Jared Smith. He's from Security Business Unit. And he's going to talk about a Firepower Device Manager and uh, the NGFW API. So I'm really excited to learn about the new APIs which we are releasing in 6.2.3. And um, let's, um, let's, uh, let's tell us about it. Cool. Sure. Thank, thank you, Veer. So just to dr drill into that, I, I work specifically in an architecture role focused on Firepower Device Manager and the next generation API that's underlying the Firepower Device Manager. So I'll uh, walk through some of the things that we'll talk about in this presentation. So we, we will talk about what is the Firepower Device Manager. I'll get into defining some of what, what it can solve, what is its purpose. And then we'll get into the FTD REST API, which is underlying the user interface for the Firepower Device Manager. We'll talk about that, how it works. Also coexistence with other tools, because you may ask, I mean, we have a couple of different management tools. What can work with what other tools and what can't work together? Sometimes you have to make a choice currently. So we'll talk about those use cases to get kind of practical ideas of what can I really do now. Uh, we'll also talk about key functionality. So what can both the REST API and the user interface currently do? Uh, just to give you an idea of where stuff stands now. And then we'll talk about some of the high level differences between the FMC API and the FTD REST API. So just to walk through Firepower Device Manager now, uh, which, which is also abbreviated as FDM. So it's an on-box web-based manager. And, and if you think of your home, like a home firewall, home router kind of device, where you just point your browser at it and go configure that device, this is the same kind of paradigm for an enterprise class firewall. So we're trying to make it simple and easy to set up. So one of the different kind of ideas that we really wanted to focus on during development of this product is ease of use, specifically for the user interface, that we wanted to make it intuitive and wizard-based to kind of bring you through flows and make it so even someone that's not a security expert can use and configure this firewall. So that was, that's been a big goal that we try to bring forth in every feature that we add to the firewall. And we also keep the same consideration for API design as well as UI design because we want the APIs themselves to be as intuitive as possible. And usually an API is a little different than, than a user interface, but still something good to keep in mind when developing a new feature. Uh, one of the things that helps, kind of helps the UI to look more fresh for the user interface is it's a modern stack that's built on current HTML widget frameworks and things like that, so we can give you a very modern uh, current look to the, to the UI. So that's something that we've aimed at making it look fresh and not stale and old, like some of the, some legacy products just don't look up to date. We're trying to, to make a difference here on that. It's currently aimed, uh, and in, in the beginning we started on the, the lower end of, of the spectrum, aiming at the, the small user and trying to make it intuitive. And this is where I said, for someone who's not a security expert, that was our original focus. And we're kind of taking the product and doing a, a little bit of a, a turn and trying to make it so it also can meet the needs of a more sophisticated user too. So we're enhancing uh, the, the depth and breadth of both the UI and the API to better tackle a broader assortment of users. So that's something that's kind of ongoing there. And one thing to definitely keep in mind is keep checking back because we keep adding new features to both the API and the user interface. So definitely keep checking back because if we don't meet your needs now, odds are we will meet your needs very soon. So Jared, I have one question. So when you mention ease of use, what type of user you are thinking about? What is your typical user of FTM would be? So the tip, typical user right now would, would likely have a couple of devices. This could be three devices, five devices, something along those lines that, that doesn't ju fully justify having a multi-device manager yet. So they probably don't want to step up to having Firepower Management Center, but it's, it's a customer that, that wants wizards. Like as I mentioned earlier, we have wizards to bootstrap the device and go through the configuration of the interfaces, licensing, NTP, and features like that. And we also have uh, wizards for things like VPN. So we, tr we try to make all these flows that you, that you may not uh, 
kind of na naturally know how to do to make it so you can drive through a complicated feature with by, by guiding the user through the step that they need to think through. So that's something that we're actively doing there. Cool. Thank you. So the, the next thing I'll take you through is the, the FTD or NGFW REST API. And that, that is the underlying layer that supports the user interface. And the, the really cool thing here is our user interface uses this. So we get a bunch of test coverage by having the UI consume our own API and that being the same thing that both customers and third parties can consume. So we, we, we really like that as kind of a design tenant here. Uh, so we've tried to stick with that. So one, one key thing to note is this is new for 623. So previous to this release, the API wasn't public and wasn't openly documented for external consumers. That's something that now is opened up. 623 is posted and you can go download it and try it out. So that's exciting. Uh, one other thing to note is we have OAuth authentication. So we, we wanted to pick an industry standard way to authenticate the user that logs into the API. So we use OAuth with JSON web tokens. There is documentation posted online on how to do that, and we'll have DevNet labs that get into kind of the gory detail of how to functionally make that work. Uh, it's, there is an inbuilt in web-based API explorer. So the, the key thing there is, I mean, if you ask, how, how do I get the documentation for the API? The, the key thing is it's in the product, and you can go in, and we'll also have videos on how to do this. You can drill in and you can look at an API browser that will show you a list of all the, the kind of content areas that you may want to look at an API for, and then you can drill in, you can see all the details on how to use the API, what are the parameters, what do the fields mean, and it's all built in. So it's easy to go learn about the API and try that quickly. And what, one of the couple of interesting things related to that, the API is defined in a format called Open API Specification, which happens to also be the kind of input language that Swagger, which is an, a, an open source API browser, consumes. So one of the things we wanted to do is pick something standards-based. And the cool thing you get with that is that there are libraries that consume Open API spec that really will generate an SDK from the API. So without us even writing an, API, uh, an SDK for it, you basically get one for free by using one of these libraries off the shelf. So it, it's a pretty awesome feature for us. And, and because it's standard-based, that, that means there's a bunch of other tools that will consume this language. So lots of different potential there, which is cool. The, the REST API functionality currently is, is basically parity with the FDM or Firepower Device Manager UI. So if you see it in the UI, you're pretty much guaranteed that there is an API for that. There's a couple of really minor caveats uh, about the wizard flows that, that those aren't documented, but we do have the underlying kind of atomic APIs for doing the same functionality. So you can do that. There's a couple other things in smart CLI that, that aren't exposed in the API yet, but we'll have APIs for those soon. So it's pretty much one-to-one -one with what you can get in the UI, and the API will probably expand in future releases beyond even what you can do in the UI to give you more breadth of functionality. So that is uh, 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 one key point here is we're expanding the API breadth and depth to match FMC. This will be an ongoing effort because that, it will definitely take a while to get there because there's a lot of functionality in Firepower Management Center, of course, but we are building that out to try to get parity there. So if you're an FMC user, at least you'd have direct to device API as an option. So we're working on that. So Jared, I'm a developer evangelist. Yeah. And looking from developer's angle, I'm really excited that you um, are going to publish uh, the specification, the Open API specification. There is a beautiful tool chain available. So what else uh, is there for developers, to, uh, like sample codes you are putting, or you're um, going to be making something available in terms of like how I can play with the um, APIs? So that is a very good question. So right now we are actively working on uh, developer kind of learning labs that will go in DevNet, uh, as, as I know you want us to do, and we're, yeah. we're, we're getting those in there. And we will have sandboxes so, pe so people can try it out. And I think with, with the learning labs, we will, we will show examples of an SDK in Python that the user can quickly get up and going on the API. So that's very exciting. And that will be coming very soon. Okay. So we're working on that. Yeah. 
The next thing I'll, I'll talk about is, is coexistence, because you might ask, I've, I've mentioned Firepower Management Center, I've mentioned Firepower Device Manager, and kind of what, what can work together, what do you have to pick one? So that, that's a very good question. I, I think a common thing for most people to, to wonder, given give these multiple products. So currently, Firepower Device Manager and the FTD API can be used with Cisco Defense Orchestrator, which is our cloud-based management tool. We are working, uh, and that's definitely an area where we're working on getting more functionality into the cloud to give you some of this cross-device functionality uh, from a cloud-based platform. So that's something, expect more things in the future in, in that area as we gain breadth on FTD management there. Uh, the UI, I mean, as I, as I mentioned, the UI is based on the API. So definitely the UI and the API on device can totally coexist, no issues there. The, the one place where there is a bit of a, a coexistence struggle, at least in the short term, is Firepower Management Center does not yet coexist with FDM, CDO, or the FTD API at the moment. That's something that we're working on. So expect changes there in the very near future. But for now, it's basically pick one. E either either you, you use a Firepower Management Center and import your devices there and manage it from there, or you take the FDM and direct device API approach. And with FMC, there also is the FMC API. So if you want the automation and you're, you're, you're kind of the FMC target customer, by all means, go there, use that API for now. Um, but if, if you don't need the extra functionality there and the depth of the, API, or the breadth of the API currently in depth meets your use cases, then you can consider Firepower Device Manager the API and potentially CDO as a management platform if you want some cross-device functionality. So, so Jared, what you're saying that if you have chosen um, a manager to manage your device, yeah. you cannot use this a this in anymore going Co forward. Correct. Well, I would say for now. So okay. stay stay tuned. We will have co more c ability to coexist forthcoming. And our our, our long-term goal is to get there and to be able to coexist yeah. both of these together. Because that that definitely. I, Really, people want to be able to choose whatever works best for them and be able to toggle back and forth. So our goal is, is to get to that Absolutely. point. So in, in, in terms of scenarios and, and who does FDM and the FTD API or NGFW API, whose needs does it meet? I mean, and, and some of this we've talked a little bit about. So typically, a small to medium-sized customer I mean, at least the, the, the depth of some of the fun functionality is not as deep as FMC. So if you're a super advanced user that needs every little knob on that, that you see in FMC right now, probably not the right time to switch yet, but we are, we're, we're working on the breadth and depth of the API. We have pretty good breadth at the moment, but the, the depth is, is a little bit lacking in some areas. So I, I, would, I would keep watch on that, but if, if you're a medium-sized user, it probably meets your needs. The other thing is a small number of devices. So if you have enough, let's say three to five devices like we, we kind of mentioned earlier, then you're likely to not need kind of an aggregated multi-device manager. It may be practical to say, hey, I need to configure device one, point your browser there, configure that, maybe point at device two later. And if you need, I guess if you need some kind of cross-device stuff, you could do some really simple API work and, and kind of bridge that boundary. Uh, so, so small number of devices. The, the other big thing, and this is one of FMC's strengths, is FMC has really awesome analytics and correlation. That's not something that's built on box for now. There are simple dashboards that the user has that can give you things like top users, top policy. I mean, we can give you top level reports. Uh, those are easier, so we do those on device. Uh, but one, one note there, we don't have a public API for those yet. We're working on getting that in a future release. So we will get there, but some of the deep analytics and correlation between threats and events is something that we do not have on device. So that would be a use case that Firepower Management Center is the right choice for the user. So uh, I guess I covered that. So all, oh, oh, one, one other key use case. If, if you were a managed service provider or a service provider that has customers that are small to medium customers, like I mentioned up here, then but this potentially could be a use case where you could automate devices for your customer and get increased scale. Because if, if, I mean, if, if they want to write uh, automation to deploy hundreds or thousands of devices with simpler configurations, that would definitely be an option. So I would think this is, is also something that service providers or managed service providers could start considering as an option.
So just to dig into some of the functionality here. So we have pretty good breadth on features. So just to call out some of the key things, and I won't go through every single option here, but we have kind of, I'll, I'll go to these highlighted ones. We have interface configuration, which is definitely a key one. And right now we support bridge virtual interfaces and sub interfaces. If you're using a VLAN and want to separate traffic, we can do that. And the bridge virtual interface is like a virtual switch where you can have a, have a V switch on the inside to have your ports switch together. Uh, we also do routing where today we have static routing uh, as one of our key features. We have OSPF that is in the smart CLI functionality that will soon have a full API, but it's not a documented API yet. So you'll be getting OSPF very soon. It's in the UI now, but in the API soon. So that, that one's coming. Um, VPN, so VPN is definitely a key, key area of interest. We have site-to-site -site VPN and we have remote access VPN. Our functionality there isn't, we don't have every little nerd knob, but if you need a simple site-to-site -site VPN or a simple remote access VPN, we can do that today. And then some of the just table stake stuff here we have is you have system settings, the ability to configure uh, the management interface, NTP, the host name, DNS config for the management interface. That's all in system settings. So pretty easy to configure that. And then really the, I would say the heart of the product is this stuff. It's the policies, the policy objects and the policies. And this is where all the really good stuff is. We have SSL policy. If you want to be able to go decrypt traffic, and one of the problems you have on the internet now is everything's going HTTPS. So if everything's going HTTPS and you want to know what's happening on my network, how can you tell it's all encrypted? So that I mean, really you need some kind of SSL inspection to be able to dig into that kind of tunnel that is the flow that you're connecting to whatever website, peek into that and then glean more information about that flow so we can adequately event on it and can adequately make policy decisions based on it. Because if people do bad things through encrypted connections, you still need visibility. So we have the ability to kind of jump in the middle of a flow, peek in and do, do the standard inspection that you would expect on an unencrypted flow. So that, that's key functionality there. Identity is another cool feature where what you can do is you can write a policy that will authenticate people trying to access certain resources on your network. So you can say, hey, if someone's going to my finance server, authenticate them, qualify who they are, and, and this integrates with ICE, which is, which is a, 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 an exciting story for us. And then the follow-on to that is, once you have your identity policy to authenticate the user, you then need to make a policy decision. So you need to write an access rule where you can say, hey, I only want to let user one and user two access finance server one. So that, that's a pretty exciting functionality that you can kind of combine the ability to identify a user with the ability to control access based on a user identity and expect more coming in that area because we're definitely adding deeper functionality there as we go. And then uh, security intelligence is another kind of cool, cool functionality here. So what, there you have the ability to leverage the Talos feeds to download blacklists of users and, we, and they're all categorized. So you can say, hey, I don't want this category, and, and they're a lot like the web, the web categories, uh, that you can block those kind of people from accessing your network and write a really a good high-level policy leveraging intelligence downloaded from Talos that's regularly updated to write intelligent policies to block things like botnets. Uh, so th that's, that's exciting. We have both URL and network blacklists there. We have NAT policy, pretty much what you'd expect, standard NAT policy, it's pretty close to what's what's in FMC right now. Of course, access policy. This is really the glue of the system. It ties everything together. You can use users, you can use applications, you can use URLs, URL categories. You can associate your intrusion policy to kind of tie in intrusion into this. And we do a really basic file policy, which is pretty much now is, is tying in AMP. So you can do a simple cloud lookup, um, e either just a lookup or a lookup and block if you see malware. So we, we tie that all together. And then in, with intrusion, so as I said, it's tied in with access. You also have the ability uh, in 623 to tune out false positives. So one of the things, if you're getting a, a signature that's getting lots of false positives, you can, you can now go disable a signature. So that's new functionality that we, we just added in. So uh, Jared, yeah. um, this is amazing. This is like, um, this is the, 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 the width of the functionality you are providing in the first go yeah. is amazing. So one question I come to my mind is that 
Um, if I am a, a simple user, I will go back to the first example I asked you to give. So most of this is like already you guys provide canned policy to me, and you I can modify them, or this I have to start from scratch. Or, or, or how do I get going? I mean, if and, and, and since you started, your the pretext was that this is ease of use and, yep. and you don't yep. have to be a security expert. So how does that play out with this this wet of features which you have shown? That, that's a good question. I, I would say there's a fine line between ease of use and giving the user functionality they want. So we're trying to trying to balance that. At, at the moment, for intrusion, which is a key one here, we have the intrusion policies. There are four canned policies that have canned rule sets that come from Talos that are enabled by default or that will be enabled if associated with an access rule. Mm -hmm. So th those, you, you don't have to know a lot about IPS. You really just have to know what profile, like w what profile do I want? Do I want security over connectivity? Do I want connectivity over security? And there's documentation that we have that will go into a little more detail on when to choose one or the other. But there's kind of high level named buckets which make that more intuitive. For things like file policy, I would say is the next most kind of bucketed thing. Right now that's a bit, a bit maybe too dumbed down, but that'll be an area where we have enhancements in the future. So there you can choose like a cloud lookup for malware or you can choose block malware. The one, one of the places where we differ a little bit from FMC in terms of full file policy is we don't have the ability to do like the file type blocking and things like that. So I would expect that in a, in a future release, but for now that that's simple. So I, yeah, so we, we do have these kind of buckets of, or, or canned ways of turning these things on. I think over time the goal is to provide the bucket so we can make it easy to set up, but also allow the ability for the more sophisticated user to drill in and tune the bucket. Okay. So I think that that's where we're working towards and we're, we're kind of taking baby steps to get there, but we'll, we'll be there before too Yeah, long. so one thing I want to add, what Jared said is um, um, that when he says that this doesn't work today, doesn't mean uh, that it doesn't work on the device. Uh, what he means is actually it is not, that functionality is not exposed yet through API. So you can't configure using yeah. API. With UI, you can do everything. So just wanted to reinstate. That, that. Uh, one of the key points there is with Firepower Management Center, like what, what I'm describing is the FDM FTD API. If you get a firepower management center, you will see full IPS tunability, where you can do custom signatures and all, all that kind of good stuff. But here, it's, it's canned. So, so if, if you want the full ex expressivity of what's currently supported by the device, FMC is the place. But if you want ease of use and, and a, a slightly simpler feature set, then the API and FDM UI very well may meet your needs. So one of the things to talk about now is FMC versus FTD API differences because they're not, they both have an API, which is, which is great, but they're not identical. So first, first bullet point here is they're similar, but not identical. So if you, if you go look at the, the different object APIs, and the good thing is we both have an API browser. So I think this is an area where at least we both have very similar documentation. I think it'll get even more consistent over, over time as, as we enhance this. So that, that's something that we are working on making even better. So similar, not, not identical. If you program to FMC, the transition, I would say, to FDM or, or, the, or the FTD kind of NGFW API should be natural or flipping the other way back. So I'd say the, we, we are actively discussing what are the differences in the model and trying to make them as similar as they possibly can be. The, as I mentioned, they both have the API browser. So at least you're experienced that way in terms of being able to go into the API browser, try the API, look at the documentation of the API, is very much consistent. So that, that's something that I would say is, is definitely a plus point there. We had efforts early on during the design of these APIs where we tried to come up with consistent behavior, consistent models. So lots of that has stuck. They, behaviorally, I would say that the APIs are very similar in terms of what does the Git look like? What does the post look like in the internals of the API? So I, I, I think that that's goodness there. The model design standards are, are the same. The error handling, the paging are all consistent. So I think just if, if you're writing a client to interact with, with FTD API versus FMC API, how it behaves is the same. So I, I think that's good. And as I said, the models are similar, not identical. 
you should very much find uh, likely that the FMC would have a superset of the model. So you probably find more fields there. Sometimes you'll see multi-device abstractions that are in the FMC model that because the FTD or NGFW API is a single device manager, it, it's simplified in that case. So some of that you'd expect. And, and I guess I captured that there. So one thing in terms of feature depth, FMC is higher, as I've been saying. You will, you will get more ability to configure a feature fully in FMC at the moment. I believe on FDM or the FT, really the FTD NGFW API, I think you see more breadth just because the UI currently is based on the FTD API. You, you have the ability to do pretty much every feature that we add in the API. So I think, I think we've gotten a bit of a jump start there just in terms of getting you a wide assortment of APIs to program against and automate against. So I think that's a kind of a, a cool thing we have going there. So I'll go to the next slide now. So that, that's all the, the prepared content I had there, but to highlight a couple of the key points that we had here, that we have the Firepower Device Manager, which is the Onbox web UI. We also have the Firepower Device Manager or NGFW API that the UI is built on top of. Uh, which provides the same breadth of functionality currently as the UI. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we're building out the functionality both in the UI and the API. So that's a pretty exciting uh, thing that we're working on now. And also, also the, uh, I talked a little bit about what are the differences between the APIs. So they're a little different between Firepower Management Center and the FTD API, they're close, but, but, but a little different. So that's something to be mindful of. If you write a script, there will be minor changes required to kind of port it between the two frameworks. You will, one of the other things we talked about is coexistence. And that's a key thing to keep in mind is that you can't run Firepower Management Center and the FTD API or F, FDM UI in parallel. Right now you have to choose one. That's something that we're working on right now and that we hope to address over time, but it's, it'll just take a little while to get there and be able to coexist. But I, I think the, the really exciting news here is, is we have this API on both of our management platforms that gives the user the opportunity to program against it and do really exciting things that you couldn't do with, with past products. So that's all I had, Veer, let me hand, hand off to you. Do you have any any questions or? Yes, Jared, I, I have one question. Um, so. I think this, by the way, this is great, uh, great product which we have launched. Does the API on this product is is going to make uh, amazing use cases? It will unlock for people which we have not even imagined yet. Yeah. So, but one of the question I have is that let's say if I am currently using FMC and I wrote a bunch of code against FMC REST API, and I understood during your pre during your uh, presentation that. Um, well we, well, we have kind of similar models, and if you wrote code, that, that migration should be very easy. I can point that to FDM. Is that true? Uh, is, or do I have to tweak a lot of code? And, and so what will be the migration path for me? It's like I should just play with the, uh, the explorer first, figure out how the model is different, and then go tweak my code, or my code I can just go try against FDM that, API. It's a very good question. So I Really, looking at the API Explorer is a great first step. Compare the two models. Usually, they'll be named either the identical thing or something very similar. So side by side, you can look at the JSON model, the fields that are in the document, and compare them. I mean, if all the names and the object name is the same, it'll likely just work. There are some other things that are different, like the authentication between the two is different. There's a slightly different token in FMC versus the OAuth and JSON web token that you'll see on Firepower Device Manager and the FTE API. So I would keep that in mind. You'll, so at the, at the least, you would have to go change the, the token-based authentication, and then you would likely need to do some minor transformation of the model. And the UR, definitely the URL prefix between the two is different. There is something in the beginning of the URL that, that qualifies if it's a FMC URL or an FTD API URL. So that's something to keep in mind there that you'll have to do at least minor changes there. But for the most part, the model should have, I would say, minor transformations required, but not major. So it shouldn't be too hard to do that. And worst case, the, the authentication that you do, you just have to write once. 
Okay, so this is really exciting. I mean, FDM, uh, uh, the API which is getting released in 6.2.3, and this, this, there will be a lot of content which will be available for you guys to follow up on DevNet. We will have a sandbox and learning lab which is in process, and it will be uh, available on developers.cisco.com. So thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, Jared. Thank you.